Good morning. The poem for today is In Memory of W. B. Yeats by W. H. Auden. W. H. Auden was a renowned poet. He was very much inspired by Yeats. He was an Anglo-American poet and his poetry is noted for his stylistic and technical achievements. He kept himself engaged with politics, morals, love, religion and a variety of tone and form in the content of his poems. This particular poem was written in 1939 following the death of W.B. Yeats in January. This is a modern poem in every respect, in its imagery, in its concept and versification. The poem, as its title indicates, is also an elegy written to mourn the death of W.B. Yeats. Coming to the theme of the poem, In Memory of W.B. Yeats is also a meditation on the role and place of poetry in the modern world. What is poetry for? Can it make anything happen? You'll get the answer as you read the poem by and by. Coming to the structure of the poem. In memory of W.B. Yeats is in three parts. Each of each of which has its own form and style. In the first section W.H. Auden discusses the death of W.B. Yeats in the dead of winter. In the second section, Auden addresses the dead Yeats directly. In the third section, having addressed the burial of Yeats, Auden concludes by addressing the spirit of the dead Yeats, Yeats again asking him to persuade us to rejoice and to heal us with the fountain of his work. So, the first part of the poem contains six stanzas, the second one, one, and the third, six again. Auden does not make use of a rhyme scheme in the first two parts of the poem, but in the third he does. This makes sense considering the elegic form of these last lines. Here's the poem. I'll explain it line by line. We are taking up the first section. Right? He disappeared in the dead of winter. The brooks were frozen and the airports almost deserted and snow disfigured the public statues. The mercury sank in the mouth of the dying day. Oh, all the instruments agree, the day of his death was a dark, cold day. He, here is Yeats, the poet is describing in using third person. So, Yeats died in winter, January, you have winter and acute winter in the west. The brooks were frozen, all the streams and uh, water bodies were frozen, the airports were almost deserted and the snow disfigured the public statues. There are several public statues erected uh, all over, mainly in the squares and of course if there is snowfall, there will be, uh, the statues will also be covered with snow. The mercury sank in the mouth of the dying day. That is, the temperature was very low. 
Oh, all the instruments agree, the day of his death was a dark, cold day. It was a very cold day. This is the actual description of the uh, winter where everything is frozen, dead and deserted. The speaker describes it as a chilling one and he actually describes Yates's death. Far from his illness, the wolves ran on through the evergreen forest. The peasant river was untempted by the fashionable quays. By moaning tongues, the death of the poet was kept from his poems. You see, the poet means to say that despite the death of this great man, things go on. The wolves in the forest are running and the peasant river, that is river flowing around the countryside, was untempted by the fashionable quays that you have, uh, that is the banks of the river from where you start uh, the river cruise mostly. And then he says, Nature is as it is. It is everything is following the daily routine. By moaning tongues, the death of the poet was kept from his poems. Everything was normal and nobody was bothered about what had happened. But for him, it was his last afternoon as himself. An afternoon of nurses and rumours, the provinces of his body revolted, the squares of his mind were empty, silence invaded the suburbs, the current of his feeling failed, he became his admirers. You see, a striking end note after each stanza. But for him it was his last afternoon as himself, that is as a living person. It was a, an afternoon of nurses and rumours, rumours kept floating that he is dead, he is about to die and his body revolted, that is all the organs uh, went dead slowly and slowly. The squares of his mind See, he uses these um, images from uh, architecture, the provinces of his body and the squares of the mind. That is, the mind also became, his mind also became empty. That is the case of brain dead. The silence invaded the suburbs and each part of the body went silent. The current of his feeling failed. He stopped feeling and he became his admirers. That is, he became what his admirers thought him to be, what his admirers uh, felt about him. His memory lived on those who loved his works. Next stanza. Now he is scattered among a hundred cities and wholly given over to unfamiliar affections to find his happiness in another kind of wood and be punished under a foreign code of conscience. The words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living. Look at the last line again. Now he is scattered among a hundred cities because he became his admirers. So his, his works rather are scattered among hundred cities. In a way he is still living and wholly given over to unfamiliar affections. So 
people love him to find his happiness in another kind of wood though he did not earn that appreciation when he was living but as dead and his works uh, all over the world he uh, he is enjoying that he is enjoying all the uh, admiration showered on him as well as the criticism the punished under a foreign coat of conscience means and the criticism that is also made of his poetry the words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living this is a very critical statement that uh, oden makes he says when you speak about yates there is this theme of life after death the words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living those who are living when they talk of the dead man that is the true interpretation of his kind of poet but in the importance and noise of tomorrow when the brokers are roaring like beasts on the floor of the burrs and the poor have the sufferings to which they are fairly accustomed and each in the cell of himself is almost convinced of his freedom a few thousand will think of this day as one thinks of a day when one did something slightly unusual once again oden speaks on how the human world is going on without the pause you see the imagery uh, he used in the beginning was from the countryside now he uses the city images you have the stock exchange this is a simile where he says uh, by using this he says they are the brokers are roaring like beasts on the floor of the burrs what happens in a stock exchange you have people shouting trying to decide the rates and it's almost wall street paris and the poor have sufferings to which they are fairly accustomed while on the other side there are people are normal there are the poor who have to suffer each day now in each and each in the cell of himself is almost convinced of his freedom this is again a very strong statement he says that all are in the cell of himself where they are convinced almost of their own freedom man is born free but everywhere is in chains you can remember those lines but actually man thinks that he is free how free do you think you are you have some kind of restraints every day every minute every hour every minute so it's a myth that you are free each one thinks of himself as a free person but is in a cell and then he repeats a few thousand will think of this day as one thinks of a day when one did something slightly unusual he again says that only a few thousand will think those admirers those readers of yeats will think that this one day was when something unusual happened otherwise it's just like another day all instruments look at the last two lines it's a repetition of the last two lines of the first stanza oh all the instruments agree the death of his the day of his death was a dark cold day so you see in the first stanza the poet points out nature's ability to move on and 
the effect that people have people are not bothered about somebody's life or death just as nature moves on people move on and the death of this great poet has affected none he is he admiring yates or is he making a very blunt statement that nothing happens all's right in the world nothing happens uh somebody's death cannot do anything somebody's life doesn't matter to anyone all these things come in very pregnantly in these lines coming to part 2 this is entirely a different kind of section unlike the first section which had six stanzas so the last two lines hardly you could call it stanza but in the second part it's just one stanza he tries to say many things through this one stanza and in this stanza suddenly everything changes it's not the third person yet is not um, narrated as a third person he directly addresses yet the dead yet and it's a short one you were silly like us your gift survived it all the parish of rich women physical decay yourself mad ireland hurt you into poetry now ireland has a madness and a weather still for poetry makes nothing happen it survives in the valley of its making where executives would never want to tamper flows on south from ranches of isolation and the busy griefs raw towns that we believe and die in it survives a way of happening a mouth see look at the surprise beginning he addresses yates directly he says you were silly like us poets are silly why the answer will come after four lines you were silly like us instead of admiring instead of paying glowing tribute to the dead person he says that you were silly like us and your gift survived it all it was his gift of poetry that he gave to the world which has survived it all but it has outlasted the decay it has outlasted your physical decay your company of rich women and the madness that you had he says now ireland and her madness and her weather are still so ireland nothing has happened to ireland he fought for ireland he was amongst those um who led the irish rebellion and he had a parish of women there were uh, many uh, women associated with him so he says it was all this if you commit yourself to something politically and and you uh, make yourself mad you madly you passionately follow the, uh, all that it will come up to nothing for poetry makes nothing happen why does has it made any difference to ireland ireland is still like that still uh, pursuing all the revolts and the weather in ireland is still the same poetry makes nothing happen this is a very very strong statement made by orden which is why this poem is so oftly quoted for poetry makes nothing happen nothing can happen with poetry it survives 
in the valley of its making where executives would never want to tamper though it remains it remains in the valley where it is produced and it it remains there just like at a place in the files which executives will never want to open it flows on south from ranches of isolation and busy griefs raw towns that we believe and die in now here when the word flows come in you feel there is this river imagery there it's like the river which flows southward from from the isolation from a small point it starts flowing and then it takes in everything it takes in all the isolation it takes in all the grief and it spreads around the towns and that we believe and die in it survives that we believe the towns come up sometimes they are flooded it touches those towns and then it moves forward it's a way it's a happening it's almost like a mouth poetry is a way of happening it's almost like a mouth it is mobile it's powerful but it still makes nothing happen got it this is the end of section 2 the poet addresses yeats directly he calls him silly instead of admiring him instead of paying glowing tributes to him and then he says it was whatever he was his poetry uh has survived it all it has survived his personal physical decay his parish of rich women and himself it was ireland which hurt him into poetry but ireland is still there as it is as it was and the weather in ireland also remains the same the poet goes on to say that poetry makes nothing happen it survives though where it began and nobody wants to tamper with with it nobody wants to make any uh, statement on it but it has the quality of a river it flows it flows from the ranches of isolations it flows from the starting point and then flows onward and as it flows it takes in many things sometimes the rot towns that come up and then they die and it survives though and it survives and it, it's it's a way of happening poetry is a way of happening it's just a mouth a mouth piece to be scattered around the world that is why we are reading uh, this poem had it's not been that kind of a poet we would not have been reading him we would not have been reading this unusual kind of tribute um, which uh, orden has paid to yeats coming to the third section you notice third section has a particular rhyme scheme a b a b c d c d e f e f g and so on so on this is again in six stanzas and of four lines each okay and there is a kind of a rhythm also there is this theme of elegy coming in here with an extended remark on poetry and the impact of poetry in particularly in the times when you can foresee the world war in the nightmare of the dark all the dogs of europe bark and the living nations wait each sequestered in his in its hate intellectual disgrace stares from every human face and seas of pity 
lie locked and frozen in the eye. You see, this is an this is the actual elegy part of it, and it is a dedication also. Right? And he says, In the nightmare of the dark, all the dogs of Europe bark, and the living nations wait, each sequestered in his hate. There is this condition where the people, it was uh, 1939, Second World War was staring at the face of everyone, all the nations. So he says, in the nightmare of the dark, when it's dark, it's like a nightmare, it's dark all around. You read Dover Beach also. All the dogs of Europe bark. This is also a strong statement. The countries of Europe are at war with each other. And the living nations wait for each other, wait to get at each other. And they are all clustered, sequestered in its hate. Each country is full of hatred for the other. And that is why he says the dogs of Europe bark. There is this intellectual disgrace that is affecting human beings. Intellectual disgrace stares from human face and the seas of pity lie locked and frozen in each eye. There is this intellectual disgrace. We, when, when there is too much of criticism, when we want, when we are filled with hatred, all you can do is <coughs> you you just relinquish the seas of pity. You don't want to... The man's innate nature is not like that. He wants to love people. He wants to uh, show pity for others. But then, because of this too much indulgence in politics, the sea of pity becomes locked and frozen. Follow poet, follow right to the bottom of the night with your unconstraining voice, still persuade us to rejoice. Now, here he implores uh, Yeats's, that is Yeats's spirit. He says, follow poet, follow right to the bottom of the night. In these circumstances, he asks uh, Yeats to Follow with his unconstraining voice. That is, in a way, he feels that Yeats's poetry has the power to rejoice, has the power to persuade us to rejoice in these testing, trying times. Though these dark images come in, but still there is hope. There is this hope of rejoice. With the farming of a verse, make the vineyard of the curse, sing of human unsuccess in a rupture of distress. With the farming of a verse, see he uses the country image again. He says, Yeats's poetry should be, <coughs> that is more and more of his volume should come out and it should make a vineyard of his curse. Instead of this curse which is hanging around on humankind, on mankind, to make a vineyard and sing of human unsuccess. What can you do in this modern time? You can sing of unsuccess but in a rapture of distress. Rapture again means joy. So this bringing in of joy with distress, in a rapture of distress. <clears throat> This is again referring to the war which is staring at the face of humanity. In the deserts of the heart, let the healing fountain start. In the prison of, the day, of his days, teach the free man how to praise. Now the tone lightens. The imagery also becomes better. The imagery of water also comes in. 
as a healing fountain. He says in the deserts of the heart, heart which has taken the form of desert, let there be a healing fountain. And in the prison of the days, you see in a few, uh, few stanzas back he had talked about a man trying to be, pretending to be free, which he is not. So he says, in the prison of his days, teach the free man how to praise. In the prison where man is almost imprisoned in his own self, teach him how to praise, how to be hopeful, how to admire and how to love mankind. This is the message. This is the beautiful message. This is what makes the poetry, uh, makes uh, Auden's poem so beautiful. Got it? Summing up of the last uh, section, he goes on to describe that earth has finally received an honoured guest that is Yeats who has been laid to rest and this let the Irish vessel lie. Again he has used this uh, metaphor of the vessel of the huge of the giant ship. He says, let it lie, where emptied of its poetry. Then, as he is dead, the, his poetry is scattered all around the world, so not there in his grave. In the nightmare of the dark, all the dogs of Europe bark, and the living nations wait, each sequestered in its hate, Intellectual disgrace tears from every human face and the seas of pity lie locked and frozen in each eye. In the nightmare when it's dark, Europe is at conflict with, uh, the European nations are in conflict with each other. They are all waiting. They are all, uh, they've all engulfed themselves in uh, hate, in hatred. And this intellectual disgrace is very apparent in every human face. And there is no pity around. Pity seems to be uh, pity seems to uh, be locked and frozen in each eye. So he demands the poet to follow right to the bottom of the night and continue his voice, continue to spread his voice, and somehow persuade us to rejoice. And he then tells uh, that there should be a farming of his verse, that is, his verse should be scattered all around. It should become like a vineyard full of fresh fruit and it should sing of human unsuccess because it's modern poetry in a rupture of delight. Somehow, even this, uh, the uh, Worse, the poetry of unsuccess, distress should be able to bring about joy. In the deserts of the heart, like the healing fountain start, if there is, the heart is like a desert, there is, uh, let there be some healing, a fountain in there and the people should learn to admire, love and think about each other. This is the modernity in Auden's poetry. A word about in memory as an elegy. Why is it different from a conventional elegy? You see, traditionally an elegy, in an elegy, all nature is represented as mourning the death. But here, nature is represented as going on its course indifferent and unaffected, as in the first answer. Secondly, in the traditional elegy, the dead is glorified, but Auden does not glorify Yeats at all. 
In fact, he calls him silly. Auden reverses and departs from the known traditions of elegy. He does not idealize uh, Yeats uh, or as poor or as uh, sentimentalized. Uh, he doesn't try to sentimentalize uh, this occasion. He proceeds to embody certain general reflections on the art of the poet and the place of poetry in the flux of events which constitute human history. So the death remains at the focus of the poem only to support the peripheral reflections in the poem. A bit of summing up. The first part of the poem addresses the last days of Yeats's life, what it was like after he died. Auden speaks on the loss and how it impacted and didn't impact the world, didn't impact the world, the natural world and the um, modern world. This second section is directed through the second person speaker to Yeats himself, uh, wherein uh, he says that poetry makes nothing happen. So Yeats's contribution, though, uh, was bountiful, yet needs more recognition. While the third is the actual elegy, meant to sum up, that the, which was spoken about previously, and the poet also makes new statements about what poetry can do for humankind, especially in the wake of World War II. That's all. I'll share some notes and you can try, uh, go through it again and again, read the poem again and again, be able to answer the questions. You have few literary devices which Auden has used in the poem. I'd like to draw your attention to the alliteration, to allusion, alliteration and enjambment. Allusion, what is an allusion? It's an expression that's meant to call something specific to mind. Though it is not mentioned anywhere, the parish of rich women indirectly alludes to the Irish independence movement. And without mentioning the Second World War, he has talked about what will happen, what is likely to happen. Alliteration occurs when the words are used in succession or at least appear close together. You have many examples. I have just a couple here. Dying day, silent suburbs. Then you have another thing, another literary term called enjambment. It occurs when a line is cut off before its natural stopping point. Enjambment follows the reader down to the next line and the next quickly. One has to move forward in order to comfortably resolve the phrase or sentence. The transition between lines 3 and 4 in the first answer of section 3 or that between 1 and 2 of the stanza 3 of the same section. Look at the section 3. Look for these and, and you find examples of enjambment. That is about literary devices used by the poet. This is a, indeed a very memorable poem by Yeats, much uh, by, uh, sorry, by Auden, much talked of and a very fitting tribute to Yeats. Thank you. Hope to see you for the next poem.